This is Ryan and Michelle, and welcome to the Celebrate Marriage Cast, where we hope to restore and reclaim godly marriages through honest and real conversations. Welcome to episode 21, and this is our Valentine's Day episode. But if you're listening to it after Valentine's Day, please still tune in because we have so much good stuff for you today. We have four areas that we want to cover with him, Ryan. Yeah. So get your candy, conversation hearts ready. You remember those little things? Those are so good. We have a lot to discuss. So we are going over yet another common trend that we're going to sort of examine and essentially disagree on. Kind of like the old uh, participation ribbon oh, yeah. show we did. I love those. We're gonna we're gonna get a little ruffle feathers. Oh a little. yeah, okay. Um, and next, we're talking love languages and why they're so important to understand. Such an important area. Then I am going to be sharing ideas for creative Valentine's Day gifts that are not just for your spouse, but also ways to share acts of kindness with people in the community. And I have another group of people that need to be remembered with that today, and I'll share it once we get there. Awesome. Based on my recent happenings of today. And then, um, finally, we have an invitation for you. So four areas, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So the first one, do you want to tell them the title? Oh, hey, really quick. If you're watching on YouTube or Spotify, we told you last week to tune in for Ryan's beard trimming. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It looks so good. Yeah. It was so much fun. It was was a really great experience, right? Yeah. It was a little scary. So- but. Barber, it was in his house. Yeah, it was in his house. And I've never had like a straight razor shave before. Yeah, that's, that's, that's like a blade. Of, that's yeah, like a blade. it's like a razor blade. Yeah, like, and like like where, like your neck? Like my neck, you know, so like. Like where by the, yeah, like, like the jugular? Like, yeah, your head is back and it's like, here, just hold still. and yeah. Trust me, I know I just met you 30 seconds ago, but right. trust me. Yeah. And he did like your like eyebrows. Yeah. Your eyebrows look good. Yeah. Your, yeah. whole, like, your whole face looks He congratulated good. me on having two eyebrows now. Oh my gosh. Yikes. I mean, I don't, I don't think you had like a <laughs> unibrow before, but they no. look really good. Yeah. And the picture you sent me had like a major hair swoop. Yeah. It was pretty tall. But we need to get, I think, I thought it looked really good. I want to yeah. get the brush to do it. We need like a curl brush. Yeah. I don't have a curl brush. Is that like a man thing? Like you have a special brush to curl the swoop of your hair? I have no idea. Okay, well, we're going to find that out, but uh, it looks really good, love. Yeah, thanks. It's handsome. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate yeah, it. We totally should go back. All right. Yeah. Make it a guy's day. Yeah. Guys. Tell them our first day at the barber. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, ladies, go to the spa. Like, why, why can't guys go to the, the barber together? Yeah. That's super awesome. cool. Uh, tell us the first one of our four topics. Do you see the title I have for it? Yeah. So, get ready to ruffle the yeah, feathers. So, here's, here's, I, I'm going to start this just saying, here like, we go. I love Valentine's Day. I do too. I absolutely love it. Mm-hmm. Um, I know there's this like trend of like anti Valentine's Day. Mm-hmm. And I just, it's just, it just really bothers me because I love this holiday so much. So I guess this is my anti, anti Valentine's Day. Yeah. Double negative, which means you actually Which means that I actually love Valentine's Day. Yeah, but kind of sounds cool to say anti anti. Anti anti (laughs) Valentine's Day. Right. I can't say it. Yeah. Um, but here's here's the thing. I we hear this. I we've heard this from people. Yeah, usually around Valentine's there are posts and stuff saying like, Oh, we don't you know, we don't celebrate it. We don't celebrate Valentine's, it's too commercial. Hang with us. If you're one of those people, please hear us out. Yeah. Um I don't know. I just I just love it as a day to to celebrate the person that you're in love with. Hmm. Or the person that you care about. You know, I guarantee I don't if you're married, single, divorced, like you have somebody that you care about. And I feel like this is a day it, 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 this is my, the way that I feel. It's, it's a day to celebrate that. It's a day to remind you of that. And it doesn't have to be you know, this whole commercial thing. Sure. Cause that's some of the feedback. People are like, oh, it's just a commercial holiday. Right. Right. But I, it's, it's a day to encourage and to love those that you love. And that's the way that I guess I look at it. Yeah. As, hey, you know, I know it's Valentine's Day. And, you know, Michelle, I just really want you to know that I, I love you and I care for you or, you know, our kids, you know. 
uh, that I, hey I, I love you like and, and I don't think I don't think uh, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, yeah, you don't have to feed into the commercialism, you know, system. You don't have to. You don't have to buy the cards. You don't have. You could make a card. You could right. do something, right? Right. right. Something special. I'm going to give you ideas later on that don't. A lot of them don't cost anything. Yeah, I mean, yeah. here's here's the thing, and and Michelle, maybe maybe you can chime in on this and just like I don't think you would ever be like. Oh man, you planned like a whole meal and you're gonna make it on Valentine's Day. I don't like that. <laughs> no, I would not turn that down. I you know, I've thought about that too, because part of it, and maybe I just need to talk to more people, but when I see those posts on Facebook, people saying like we don't celebrate Valentine's, you know, we we believe it should be year round. I think it's a like a yes. But why, like, are you, I guess I'm just hoping that you're doing that. Yeah, like right. if you're, that's fine. Like maybe you don't want to, you know, buy into the consumerism stuff, literally, you know, buying things. But I really hope that that's just not your way of like guarding and protecting your heart. I just wonder like, are you really doing that year long? And like, what is it, what does it hurt to do that? I mean, it's kind of like, like, someone saying I wouldn't celebrate our anniversary because we should do that year round. I think it's just a chance to show your love and affection. Right. So yeah. I, I think I just want to encourage the people that are saying that, like, is like, does your spouse, like, yeah, like if your spouse did something for you, would you actually really like that? And if the answer is yes, maybe you could just have a conversation with your spouse and say, Hey, I, I think we I think it is a good chance to just pause and celebrate each other. We don't have to buy anything, but right, right. let's let's do it today and all the other days. Yeah. And I really hope they are doing it all the other yeah, days. If that makes absolutely. sense. That's kind of my thought on it. Absolutely. I, just, I guess yeah. I don't know. I haven't done like a survey of the anti Valentine's Day people to figure out the underlying things because I do get that. It should be year round. Right. It should be. Right. Um, you know, it's kind of like, you know, maybe other holidays, though, most all holidays are a reason to intentionally stop and think about that. Like um, Martin Luther King Jr. Day, should we always be aware of of that? Should we always be fighting for justice and aware of, you know, diverse, like celebrating diversity, things like that? Yes, sure. but it's yeah. also a day where we intentionally do that. Yeah. It's kind of my thought. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it's perfect. I, I think the, that intentionality, it's a day to remind you if nothing else, mm -hmm. to stop and just, hey, I really appreciate you. I love you. I appreciate everything you do. And it's it's just that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. You should do that every day. <laughs> but like it's it's a day for for you to to really be intentional on celebrating your spouse, celebrating your relationships, the people that you love. Yeah. We do something really fun for Valentine's. We actually try to do something as a couple before or after. And I don't know really when this started. It's been probably at least five years or so. But so we did, we told you last week we were going on a vision retreat. It was so good. We went to an Airbnb. It was unplugged, remote location. And we did a really fantastic uh, four hours on the Friday night, one hour on the Saturday morning, just to regroup on everything. And it was so good. And that was kind of our Valentine's Day getaway. Yeah, yeah. And then on Valentine's Day, Ryan actually makes a fancy meal for us, for, you know, so him and I, and then our kids. And there used to be this place in Sioux Falls called Spazia. I don't know if it was a chain or not. I don't think so. But they would put down like white butcher paper on the tables and you could have crayons. I'm sure wherever you're listening, there's probably a restaurant yeah. around you that does this. And so he'll do that in our kitchen table and then, you know, have, um, I was going to say candles, but we don't, we actually don't have candles, but like we have like the fake candles with the yeah. little fake flickers that you'll put in the center of the table and kind of dim the lights and yeah. just make it fancy for us and the kids. And it's something they really love and look forward to. I look forward to it. Yeah. And it's just a special time. Absolutely. So yeah. kind of a tradition. Yeah. Yeah. So just for a sure. way to do something. For sure. Intentional and showing love, you yeah. know, for your family. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. Also, we're not being paid by like the, you know, Valentine's Day companies. Let's just make that <laughs> clear too. Like Hallmark's not paying us to do this uh, portion of the show, but 
I think it's just an interesting conversation. Yeah. So that's that's great, Ryan. Thank yeah, you for that. Absolutely. Yeah. The other uh, point too, and, and the second thing that we really want to talk about as we're going into Valentine's Day, mm-hmm. you know, I'm sure a lot of you have heard this before, but um, this idea of love languages. Yeah. So there, there was a book written several years ago by Dr. Gary Chapman. Uh, and really the premise of this book, these five love languages, it, it's really simple, but just different people have different personalities have different um, ways in which they receive and give love. And I think it's a really important conversation because when you learn to recognize the preferences in yourself and in your loved ones, you can learn to really identify the root of, of conflicts. You can connect better and also truly begin to, to grow closer. Yeah, because what happens a lot of times is the two spouses are different. So one could be trying to show their affection and just totally missing. And that could be the underlying cause for maybe some disconnect. Yeah. So there's, there's five love languages. I'm just going to run through these here, here briefly. Um, But the first one is acts of service for these people. Actions speak louder than words. So if, if you're um, doing something for your spouse you know, and that's like a big deal. That's, that's kind of what it is. Like, Hey, I'll make dinner tonight. Yeah. Type of thing. Yeah. Um, this area, we just retook the test and this area moved up for me. Yeah. And I think it's also, it can change with the season. So the season has just felt busy and there are just a lot of things going on. And I feel like maybe those acts of service are just all the more important. So when I just don't even have like the mental capacity and you swoop in or like, you know what? I got dinner tonight. It's like, oh my gosh, thank you. Like, yeah. thank you so yeah. much. Or I think especially I felt that coming out of your leg break, I really feel like I was dealing with adrenal fatigue. I had been caregiver for so long for you that I just like the end of the day got there. I just, I literally physically couldn't like make dinner. Like it just, it just was too much. And you made a lot of dinners as I was like trying to repair from that season of being caregiver, you know? And now I feel like we have a really good routine and we all kind of rotate dinners and stuff. But yeah, yeah, those are great acts of service and much appreciated. So the second one is receiving gifts. So for some people, receiving a heartfelt gift is what makes them feel most loved. Sure. The third one is quality time. The language is all about giving the other person your undivided attention. This was my number one. Yeah. Yep. I just, I, I like for me, I crave, I long for, for that. That's, yeah. that's definitely my, my top. And I think with that one too, the reason it's so important is our kids are both like that too. Yeah. And anytime that we feel like the wheels are starting to fall off or we'll just see they're just a little crabbier than usual or shorter, it typically, and, and our daughter now is, she started turn 18, but she was so wise. It was a couple of weeks ago and people were, or, I mean, maybe a couple of months ago, but she just was like, you know what? She came to us and she's like, I think I realized why I felt a little bit short. Like we just haven't had quality family time and that's my top love language. And we were like, oh my gosh, that is so like right. astute and mature of you to realize that. And and we know this about our kids too. Yeah. Um, but they they just need it. And we can see a change when when we don't have it. So carving out that time in the calendar is really important for us. Yeah. Yep. Uh the fourth one is words of affirmation. This language is used as words to affirm other people. I think of like encouragement. Mm-hmm. That's what comes to my mind. Yeah, this used to be my top. Now I think it's number two. Yeah. And then the last one is physical touch. To this person, nothing speaks more deeply than appropriate physical touch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it could be hug. It could be, you know, just sitting side by side or just yeah. being in proximity, right. you know, with, with right. your spouse. Right, yeah. So um, we encourage you to, to take this. If you go to fivelovelanguages.com, that's the number five and then lovelanguages.com. Takes less than 10 minutes to answer and to find out the love languages. If you're doing this with your with your spouse or the person that you're in a relationship with, 
click romantic, but you can also do the family version, yep, uh, workplace or friend version. Right. And I think what's great about that is, I mean, we both have taken so many different types of personality assessments, the disc profile file the you know whatever one is the um is it the myers brig the clifton strengths yeah. all i mean all of them for work i'm sure you guys have too so many different tests but have you ever done a test for your workings of your family and your interactions yeah that is gold yeah, absolutely yeah because i think when when i understood oh my gosh ryan needs time i can I can write him cards. I can give gifts. I can do this. But if I'm not being intentional with my time and I'm a really busy person, so I can just kind of scurry about the house at night. And it's really important for me to just stop and sit and pause. Um, Otherwise, I'm just missing connecting in that way. Yeah. And it's such an important conversation to to really be a student of your spouse's love languages. Because I'm naturally going to give the way that I feel best. Yep. But that's not necessarily how you, like I could give you all the quality time in the world yeah. because that's how, how I feel loved, but that's different than how you do. And so it's so important to become a student of what your spouse's love languages are. I, I think that's something that I got like, oh, I know what mine are and I'm like, yay. But like, which, which is great. It's, it's good to know that. But it's also like it's it's almost more important to be to be a student of your spouses, yeah, and and know that you know oh that might not it might not be high on my list, but I know like it is high on your list, mm-hmm. and so I need to get you know aware of that and and get better at that. Yeah, I think um, I think too there might be. Like a uh, preconception among guys that well, that's kind of like foo foo or kind of I don't know, like weird to do to take this love languages test. It sounds kind of I don't know, um, but we because we we kind of heard that from some of the guys in our life group. But yeah. both of them took it and were like, "Whoa, that was really <laughs> right. insightful," and now it makes sense. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, it it would be a great use of your time to do that. Yeah. Um, and then you can connect in an appropriate way for your spouse. So yeah, yeah so good. Absolutely. Well, the third thing is, so first we've talked about the anti-anti-Valentine's Day. Then we talked about the love languages. And now we want to talk about Valentine's ideas. So um, as we were getting ready for the show, one of my friends was was talking and she was like, oh my gosh, you could give people ideas kind of like you did at Christmas with the gift ideas. You could give them Valentine's Day day ideas. And um, I thought that was such a great idea. So I have a list here and I just want to spout off some ideas. And then these first ones are for your spouse. So um, write a love letter or a note expressing your affection and appreciation. And I think that in our time of just being so busy, that is a really easy one to kind of overlook. We used to write each other a lot of cards. And I feel like the busier we get, the longer we've been married, the less we do that. But how much would that mean for your spouse, even if it's not going out and buying them a big fancy gift for Valentine's or any time, whenever you're listening to this show, just get a get a card, make a card, print off a piece of paper, do whatever, get a card at the Dollar Tree. It can be just whatever, but write words in there. Just write a couple of sentences about what you appreciate about your spouse and express that affection. And that's going to be treasured to them. Yeah. And it's free. It is free. Well, unless you buy a card at the Dollar Tree. Right. Right. But like you could take a piece of paper. But it could be. Could be free. Could be free. Yeah. Um, Cook a special dinner together or surprise your loved one with their favorite meal. We talked about how we're doing this for um, for Valentine's Day. Um, Take a walk. I mean, just think about things that you might not normally do that would feel special to your spouse. Something to kind of just shake things up. So maybe say, hey, let's go for a walk tonight. Or Hey, um, you know, maybe you plan a date or something. Offer to take care of household chores or responsibilities. Maybe you find out that their love language is acts of service. That would be a great way to lighten their load, do some extra things. Plan a surprise date night with activities or events that your partner enjoys. We've had a lot of fun different date nights. I mean, we were just, the other day, someone was talking about axe throwing or, you know, like Dave and Buster's doing, you know, an arcade or, um, you could go roller skating. There's so many fun things, yeah. dance lessons. I think that I actually have that later up on on my list here. 
Um, give something thoughtful and meaningful as a gift. Give an experience instead of a, a material possession. Plan a weekend getaway or even just a day trip to explore a new area. We have done this as an O'Connor family. We have done something. It's kind of like a north, south, east, west challenge. We've done this in a variety of ways. It's so much fun, you guys. You could do this with your spouse. You could do it with the family. But um, we actually wrote, Ryan, do you remember when I chopped up all the cardinal directions, north, south, east, west? And I, I probably put 16 in there. So there were four sets of north, four east, Northeast, Southwest. Yeah. And then yeah. I had them in a cup and we got in a car, all four of us. And I was like, okay, Thomas, draw from the cup. Okay, North. Okay, so we started driving North. Okay, Ella, you draw from the cup. You know, and I just picked a, a set amount of time. Like, okay, after three minutes, we're going to pick another one. Ella, you draw. Okay, we drew East. Okay, now we're going to go East. Okay, after five more minutes. Okay, Ryan, you draw one. Okay, now we're going to go North again or whatever. And right. We tried to do that long enough that we're like, okay, once we hit 30 minutes out, we're going to find something to do. Wherever we're at, we're going to find something to do. And this, I mean, depending on where you live and how far into the country you get, but it was really fun yeah. to just, and I don't know that we, I'm trying to think, I think we ended up doing something in nature because I think we were so far in this right. random area, but that would be a fun idea. Yeah. Or we have gone to random communities outside of our city that we had never been to. And we were like, let's go. And you could do the same thing. So north, south, east, west, pick a direction, drive to like the nearest city or however far away, and then find something there, whether it's a restaurant or a coffee shop or something and have fun just trying. I mean, maybe you go have ice cream at a random city at a random, you know, little shop that they have. Yeah. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Yeah. Like that and that for you, I think you love that because that's quality time. Oh yeah, for sure. And you love a good adventure. So yeah. um, that would be a really fun idea. Um, you could volunteer together for a cause or you could do something like a relaxing spa day at home. Guys, this does not have to be expensive. Ryan has done this for me where he's looked up recipes on the internet where it's like homemade DIY face mask right, or face and you made it out of like yogurt and or you just buy one at the store. It's fine too. Yeah. Um, and you set up a like in our room after the kids were asleep, you had it. So there was like, um, you had chopped up like some strawberries and I think you had even like dipped them in chocolate and you had a little homemade spa mask and you had my robe out. I think you warmed it up in the dryer. Um, Ryan literally is the sweetest. <laughs> uh, you're oh, so sweet. Nice. Just saying this, I'm like, oh my gosh, you're so sweet. You had a foot soak and you're like, just, you know, like sit there. Um, you had these little snacks for me. Sit here and enjoy with your face mask, soak your feet, and then I'll give you a massage. And you're not paying for a fancy day spa and it's right. just a really nice special way to connect to. Yeah. So you could do something like that for your spouse. Um, plan a movie marathon with your partner's favorite films and snacks. You could take a dance class together or simply dance in the living room to your favorite music. We have had a family dance party. Yes. We have a, um, if you're in Sioux Falls, we have a, like a strobe light, a strobe light or yeah. dance where it like rotates with the yeah. lights. Yeah. You could totally borrow it. Yeah, um, absolutely. If someone wants yeah. to have a dance party right. at their house. Um, we personally own one. <laughs> Surprise your spouse with breakfast in bed and maybe a special note. You can write down reasons why you love and appreciate them. We talked about that. Was that with Bob Paul that we talked about the cherished list? Yeah. Um, surprise outing to a place that holds sentimental value for your relationship. Maybe you go back to where you got married or, you know, where you got engaged or whatever and just take a walk there or something. Um, you could do a DIY, DIY event, do like a couple's painting night where they, you know, you have the two paintings and the two pieces go together and make one whole painting. Um, or just spend quality time with your spouse. That's such a simple way to do. Just spend time together. Plan an intentional yeah. time to spend quality time. Yeah. Um, I do want to add a, kind of a part two to this. And I know I've given you a lot of ideas, but Valentine's Day can be difficult for people that maybe, I mean, maybe you're you're single or maybe you're um, divorce, maybe you're a single parent or maybe you're a widow or a widower. And I just want to say that I think it's good to think beyond ourselves and our relationships and how we can be Jesus to others. Yeah. That especially this month, February, I think it can be tough for people. 
So as you're thinking about what you want to do for your spouse or your children, I just want to encourage you to think about people around you that might need a little extra TLC and what is one thing that you can do for them, um, one way to brighten their day. Ryan, I just sub taught today for first graders and I want to encourage everybody listening to do something nice for teachers. There's a few (laughs) different groups of people that just always have my heart. First responders are one of them. Actually, our our producer, Adam Russell, is a first responder. I just, I have so much just appreciation for first responders, for um, for health professional, healthcare professionals, so much respect and appreciation, and also teachers. And that was just brought up again today because, Ryan, there was a pencil stabbing in my classroom. Oh, yikes. Now, everyone went home okay, but... Like, it's just, there. like, it's a crazy world out there. Yeah, yeah. And there's so many behaviors. Even if you have great kids in your class, even managing 22 kids, someone's going to have something going on all the time. I mean, <laughs> right. when you're like, right. there, there's just always something. Yeah. And it's kind of crazy. Yeah. But people do this every day of their career for the betterment of our community. Right. Right. And I just want to plug. You should just, if it's on your heart, appreciate a local teacher because they really deserve it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, somebody was like, how'd the day go? And I was like, I don't, I don't really know why I do this. And they were like, sometimes I wonder that too. And my heart felt a little mm-hmm. sad because she was really serious about it. And we need, we need good teachers. So anyways, whoever you decide to show love and compassion for, I want to give some ideas. One, provide companionship. It could be spending time visiting, um, visiting them especially elderly people, right? we used to do that. We'd yeah. go to nursing homes and Ella would make little Valentines for them and we'd pass them out. Just, we should make like 15. We'd go down the hallway and pass them out. Create a care package. So if there's someone that you know is gonna be on their own, um, even if it's past Valentine's, I get that the show airs, you know, we're airing this on the 13th. You'll probably hear it after Valentine's. Just send a care package sometime this month. Just yeah. do it. Put it on your calendar. Buy some little goodies for them. Send it in the mail. Um, maybe it's a relative that lives on their own. I have a, a couple of uncles that live all on their own and we try to remember them. You could send them flowers. Maybe it's a college student. Send them a care package. Um, we've done this. We we love the site, Harry and David. You could send like fancy pears and cheese and stuff. We send, we send a lot of things through there or just simply write them a card. Write them a letter saying, hey, thinking about you, love you, and just want to wanna say hi. So um, just some ideas, Ryan, for, for both your spouse and for people that just need to be shown some extra love yeah. this month. Yeah. Michelle, that, that list is so good. And I, I you know, I, I think for me, a, a couple of things stand out and, and this is really the essence, I think of what we're trying to talk about. One, so many of those things are free. Yeah. And it's, it, it really is just expressing um, however you want to, that you love and appreciate someone. Like, that's really what we're trying to, you know, this anti-anti-Valentine's Day uh, message. <laughs> uh, it, it, it really is that. And, and it's, you know, obviously that starts, that starts with your spouse. Um, you know, uh, uh, that's kind of what we're talking about. But I, I, I love looking at other people. The people you encounter every day, everybody loves to hear encouragement. Yeah, I don't think anyone would turn it down. Yeah, if if you were to send a thank you note to your your child's teacher and say just, hey, thanks for everything you do. Yeah. They're not going to be like, oh, I don't like that. Actually, that reminds me, the other day, our daughter has eaten gluten-free for all of her since kindergarten, and now she's a senior, and I sent a note to the nutrition department, and I just said, hey, thank you so much for all of these years of special dietary concerns. Making sure she has appropriate food and she's not going to get sick at school. And the director wrote back and said, I want to pass this on to our team. We hardly ever hear this. So yeah. thank you for saying that. Yeah. It just goes back to wow. expressing gratitude. That was our sermon we did in December. Yeah. Express gratitude. Right. right. Got to express it. What yeah. a great time to do that. Absolutely. I, and I think this is just a great reminder of February, this month of love, mm-hmm. to to show the the love that we have for other people because of the love we have from Jesus. 
It's really our vision and mission, right? Yeah. We meet Jesus, have our life changed by him, and then we be we are to be Jesus yeah. in our community. Yeah. So good, Ryan. Yeah. Ryan, we have an invitation for our listeners. We want to invite you to something special. Yeah. Should we do it? Yeah. All right. So we have a date night. We would like to invite you to, if you're in the Sioux Falls area, we would love to have you come to this. And this actually could be a gift for your spouse oh, yeah. for tomorrow. So if you're like last minute of, hey, there's still time. And actually I would say this, even let's say both of you are listening and you both get two tickets thinking, oh, I'm going to bring myself. And you end up with double tickets, no big deal. I'm sure the church will work with you. Or you could just bring another couple. How fun would that be? A yeah. double date. Yeah. So March 1st, it's a Friday night. It's my birthday Eve. Um, what a great way to celebrate my birthday Eve. Yeah. <laughs> Friday, March 1st, <laughs> seven o'clock here at Celebrate. We are having a marriage date night and it's so cool, Ryan, what we're doing because um, we will have guests join us live via Zoom. And Drs. Les and Leslie Parrott, they are New York Times bestselling authors of Saving Your Marriage Before It Starts. The Parrots have been featured in USA Today and the New York Times and on the, t- the Today Show and Oprah. And they will be zooming in to walk us through a personalized assessment called the Better Love Assessment with a custom action plan um, customized for each couple. So this is super cool because not only is it going to be a great teaching, but you're really going to get practical things that you can do that are going to be customized just for your relationship. And we would say if you're married, if you're dating, if you're engaged, or maybe you want to be married someday, you could come if you're single too. Just come and learn. Come with some friends and learn. Um, but that would be a really great thing. And it's only $45 per couple. It includes dessert and childcare. You can just sign up through our website, celebrate.church slash marriage. And we will put the link in our show notes as well. Yeah, absolutely. We're looking forward to that. Yeah, it's going to be super fun. Ryan, anything else for today's show? No, I mean, it's it's just, it's just I, I think we just went through it. Of just use, use this chance to be intentional. Intentional with the people around you, the people that you encounter every day to, to really just love on people. And I don't care if you don't like Valentine's Day, just just use it as an opportunity to just spread the love to to people. Um, like I said, because of because of of Jesus and because of the love that that He gave us to to share with other people. So good. Thank you for joining us today on the Celebrate Marriage Cast. If you would like further help or resources for your marriage. You can check us out at celebrate.church slash marriage. Additionally, we would love to hear from you. If any of these episodes have really resonated with you, please call and share. Our new phone number is 605-951-0110. We'll put that phone number in our show notes as well. We would look forward to listening to those and we hope you have a great week and happy Valentine's Day. Hi, my name is Rachel from Omaha, and I just wanted to say how much I appreciate Ryan and Michelle's authenticity. It's really been impactful in in my life and in my marriage, and I highly encourage this podcast.